Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have the 2025 MIT final question three for you guys. So why don't we just get into the question? Well, this question is very similar to our previous question, right? It involves floor functions. But this one is just a tiny bit more complicated. But everything is going to be fine. So, if you watched my previous video, then you see that the key point of solving an integral like this is to first find the range for the flow function of x. And if you go ahead and watch my previous video, you know that the flow function of x in this case will equal to an integer m ranging from 0 to 9. But that is only in this case. And also, if you watch my previous video, then you see that x, or the inside of the flow function, will be greater than or equal to k and less than k plus 1. And if this is true, then we see that the floor of x is equal to k. Okay, but if you watch my previous video, you know that we can't just change the bounds of the integral from k to k plus 1, because this is only a tiny interval. So what we actually have to do is we have to sum when k goes from 0 to 9 of the integral ranging from k to k plus 1 of the inside. The floor of, if you didn't notice this already, you see that this big fraction is just phi, or the golden ratio. So it is just phi to the power of, the floor of x is just k. Now, when trying to find the definite integral of a constant, all we need to do is, we need to multiply the constant by the interval. So this will just be the sum when k ranges from 0 to 9. And in our case, we actually pretty much just removed the integral because the interval is just 1. So this is the last name. Now, if I unpack this summation, you see that we'll get the floor v of 0 plus the floor v of 1 plus all the way up to the floor v of 9. Now, the first change I'll do is we see that this is obviously 1. Okay, so what do you think of when we want to find the integer part of phi raised to some powers? Well, in one of my previous videos, one around one month ago, you see that there's this very nice connection with phi, c, and Lucas's numbers. And I'll explain those right later. So, I'll first explain to you what I think. What I think when I see is we're trying to connect phi to some powers with an integer. And to do that, we can use this formula that I introduced in one of my previous videos, which is phi to the power of n plus c to the power of n is equal to the nth Lucas number. So first things first, what is c? Well, if you haven't watched my video, then I'll tell you that c is just the conjugate of phi. And why would I say that we made a connection for phi to the nth power and an integer? Well, because Lucas's numbers is very similar to Fibonacci numbers. And of course, they're all integers. So now we have connected phi to some power with an integer. So we know that phi is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And c is its conjugate, which is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. Now, why don't we talk about some interesting properties of this? So you know that this, or c raised to the power of 1, is less than 0. But we also know that c squared must be greater than 0, and c to the power of 4, and so on for all even n's. 
Okay. But for all ends, it's always negative. But the one thing they have in common is that the absolute value of this raised to whatever power is always less than one. So I'm just going to put that over here. So properties of c to the power of n is less than zero when n is odd, is greater than zero when n is even, and the one thing that they share in common is that the absolute value of c of n is always less than one. Okay, so now that we've mastered c, why don't we go back to the original equation? So, in which values would this be valid? Well, one case is if we first focus on the addition cases, one case might be 1.5 plus 0.5. This is an integer, and also maybe 1.2 plus 0.8 is equal to 2. So, what do you see in common with these? Not just that the right hand side is the same, but that when we take the floor function of this made up phi, it is always the Lucas number minus one. And you can try this on your own. But what about for the subtraction cases? Well, there can be 3.1 minus 0 0.1. This is three. Maybe 3.8. 6 minus 0 0.6 is 3. Now, for the subtraction cases, we see that the floor of my, of my made up phi is equal to the Lucas number. So, if we just change this into these properties, then you see that it's equal to the nth Lucas number if n is odd and is equal to Lucas's nth number minus one if n is even. Okay, so now that we have mastered phi, let's see, we first have to calculate the values of Lucas's numbers to figure out this. So, let's see, the Lucas number of zero is two, Lucas of 1 is 1, Lucas of 2 is 3, and now you see it follows the Fibonacci pattern. Lucas of 3 is 4, Lucas of 4 is 7, Lucas of 5 is 11, Lucas of 6 is 18, Lucas of 7 is 29, Lucas of 8 is 47, Lucas of 9 is 76. Okay, so now that we have this, if you, and I believe you can try this on your own, plug everything into here, but just be wary that if n is an even number, so for example, phi to the second power, you have to calculate L of 2, but subtract 1. So if you did everything correctly, then you see that this summation will just evaluate to 193. This is actually not the properties of phi to the n, it is actually the properties of the floor of phi to the n. So this is the final answer of the 2025 MIT Integration B final question three. So thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoy my video and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.